Yep. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Badger's Step Up, and thank you for coming today. That's something I normally be saying right around this time, as I typically work right now, but instead I'm here talking about my work. I'm really excited about it, and before I get started, I'd really like to just thank my two mentors, Jenny and Rachel, who are sitting right here, not only for creating a great program, but for hiring me, letting me come here, and coming here themselves. So that's great. My name is Alex, I'm a sophomore, I'm studying psychology here at UW, and I work for UHS as a Badger Step Up program facilitator. As a psychology major, it's my job to perpetuate the inexplicable stereotype that we can read your minds. So, I'll try to do that right now. With the exception of my bosses, of course, most of you are probably thinking, we just heard some really groundbreaking research on estrogen and Parkinson's. Why are you talking about some stepping up program? I want to stay seated, right? <laughs> Hopefully, I have answers to both of those questions and more. So, today I'll be talking about Badger Step Up, but I'll be using an atypical order in case you haven't seen already. Rather than starting with what Badger Step Up is, I'll use the Start With Why theory created by psychologist Simon Sinek, and you may get a little bit lost at times, but I've designed my speech to try to avoid that as much as possible. So, I'll start with some quick necessary background info to answer the question that I know is just burning within all of you. Before I do that, I'll have to start with the quick background info. So, Badger Step Up is a two-hour alcohol prevention, leadership development, and bystander intervention course. We put it on for all new Greek Life members. They must go through the training. And registered student organizations must send one or more delegates every calendar year so that they're refreshed enough in current standing on that. We have five interactive modules in our presentation that also uses a PowerPoint. And now that you're all established and experts on Badger Step Up, I'll start by starting with why. This is what's called the Golden Circle. It was created by the aforementioned Simon Sinek. He's a psychologist. And the theory goes that most great and most accomplished people do not have their accomplishments due to their phenomenal products or their phenomenal outcomes. They have them because of their phenomenal reasons for being phenomenal mission statements and because they worked from their whys to their whats. That's not only what the order we'll be taking today is, but also we use this in our Greek life presentation to highlight the myriad merits of Greek life that often extend beyond and rarely include alcohol. So, moving on, I'll start by starting with why. What is Badger Step Up's why? Our first, even though it's last on the list, is to emulate the Wisconsin idea. We wholly believe that education should influence people's lives in and out and beyond the classroom. So, we hope that people have the ability to take away really important messages from our program, but furthermore that we hope for some people Badger Step Up is part of their Wisconsin experience and that they can leave the university with the tools to change the world like only Badgers do. Great. So, moving on, we also aim to promote safe alcohol use that's conducive to the amazing social and academic life that UW-Madison offers as unlike any other school in the world, in my opinion. And lastly, <laughs> we aim to increase student prevention, intervention, and response Prevention is preventing something with a negative outcome from happening. Intervention is preventing it from deteriorating as well. So, moving on, I'll go into our how. You may be thinking right now, how do you accomplish this? These are some great goals, but what are they without methods to do this? We have a two-hour program that I mentioned before, and we have five interactive modules pertaining to alcohol, risk reduction skills, social norms related to alcohol, bystander intervention, leadership development, and policies and resources on campus related to alcohol. This is all summed up within the two-hour PowerPoint, and we have a flexible and well-crafted script that's really designed to increase and maximize out of classroom recall. We also use positive reinforcement and reflective listening techniques to really draw out those key concepts and make sure that they're coming organically from participants themselves and we're not lecturing people. Lastly, the PowerPoint contains many graphs, facts, stories, and stuff of the likes. Great. So, sorry. To augment this, moving back a little bit, to augment our program, we have pre and post assessments to provide primer and a degree for of sorts. This again just helps us accomplish our whys, helps create that out of classroom recall, and is a great method for data collection. Lastly, as I mentioned before, that registered student organizations must do yearly checkups by sending one or more delegates every year. Perfect. So, I've included two of my favorite slides from our presentation and cited them justly. This is one that we use in our social norm policy, and this shows perceived versus actual alcohol use on campus. 
we collected this from our pre-assessment data. And these bars, the red is actual, the gray is perceived alcohol use, and they are in response to the two questions, how many drinks do you typically have at an event involving alcohol, and how many drinks do you think the typical Wisconsin student has at an event involving alcohol. A couple key concepts that we love to draw out of this. First, as you can blatantly see, that we perceive we drink more than we do. Pretty obvious. Going a bit more into theory, approximately one in five people surveyed choose not to drink at the typical event involving alcohol, and even they didn't predict that anybody would exhibit the same behavior. Zero percent right there. Last thing involves a bit of math, my favorite. If you add up 35%, 28%, and 19%, you get 83%. That's it. It's just fun math. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what that number is, is that's a significant number because four or less drinks, as defined by the National Institutes for Alcoholism and Alcohol Abuse, is low risk drinking. So 83% of badgers report drinking in a low risk manner, which is something that I never would have guessed before working with the badger step up. My second favorite slide from the PowerPoint is this one, and it shows the five effective steps to effective intervention in true step-up form as a staircase. It's interesting to know that failure at any of these steps results in no intervention at all. So the first step is to notice the event and then interpret that there's a need for action. Oftentimes those two go hand in hand, but unfortunately not always. Step three is to assume personal responsibility and not fall victim to the bystander effect for groupthink. Step four is to build effective intervention skills, and step five is to take action. Great. Moving on, we'll go into the last component of the start with why theory, which is the what. What does badger step up produce? What are our outcomes? So across the board, we see intervention awareness increases. This could be how to intervene or when to intervene. Again, we see norm busting, which kind of plays into the first graph that I showed you. And it's correcting and replacing social norms regarding alcohol on campus. We also see increases in awareness and use of risk reduction skills. So those are maybe maximizing the goods of alcohol while minimizing the not so goods. It could be myriad ways to do that. And lastly, we highlight policies such as the Responsible Action Guidelines and the Student Organization Al Alcohol Policy. And we see lots of increases in knowledge of that. These are two lovely graphs created by my boss, Rachel Dyer, cited in the bottom left. And I'd really like to talk about them because I think they're really phenomenal. These are our hardcore outcomes. These are our qualitative and quantitative outcomes. And the one on the left really shows something phenomenal. Like I said, we show increase in awareness of in risk reduction strategies. That's a 127% increase in risk reduction strategies. But also, I thought it was really great that there's a 72% increase in awareness and perception of self-efficacy. It's really awesome. On the right, we have a graph collected from our Greek life data, and it shows, similar to the first graph that I showed, the difference and the deviation from perceived versus actual alcohol use on campus. And again, that 62% of even Greek life students report drinking less than four drinks at a typical event on the alcohol. I've talked about some great things that I think Badger Step Up does, and we can't do them without phenomenal people. So, Badger Step Up is a subsidiary of University Health Services Healthy Campus Department and who makes BSU, Healthy Campus UHS, our coordinators and specialists that are phenomenal, Jenny, Rachel, Rianda, and lastly, four amazing Badger Step Up presenters and myself. So, my, my coworkers do amazing work in their graduate fields. Some of my coworkers are studying Masters in Public Health, Counseling, Journalism, Social Work, and I'm in Microbiome 101. <laughs> so this is who makes Badger step up, and we think we do a really great job at that. That was something I added on to the, the start with why theory, it's something I ad-libbed, and here's the second thing that I'll add on to the start with why theory. Where do we see Badger step up going in the future? Last week, I went to a professional fraternity and a student organization traveling, and I delivered customized content and customized alcohol awareness courses to them as part of a portable presentation initiative. Secondly, we are in the works of developing a graduate student-specific Badger Step Up program, which I think is really phenomenal because it's not illegal for graduate students to drink most of the time, which is something that we talk about in our typical Badger Step Up program. Lastly, we have a brand new advert campaign that we showed at Camp Randall, at the Cole Center, and even sent out to some students detailing the, th the three umbrella terms to intervention. Sorry, I'm Renaissance woman du jour, Rachel Dyer. So in closing, I'd like to... I'd like to end by thanking you for listening, thanking the symposium for having me, thanking my coworkers and bosses, 
and remember to fill out your post assessments. Thank you. Question? Yes. Um, what do you classify as a drink? Because like four shots is like a lot different than four beers. Absolutely. So we go over that. I didn't highlight that because I didn't have time. But we go over that in our second module and relating to alcohol and risk reduction strategies. We go by one standard drink size. So for hard 80 proof liquor, that's 1.5 ounces, which is a standard shot glass. For malt liquor, it's 8 to 9 fluid ounces. Beer is 12 ounces. And wine is about 5 ounces. Okay. So those are one standard drink size. And that's what. Okay. Is this the same thing we did when we came here as freshmen? This is not. Are you talking about Alcohol EDU? Yeah. Alcohol EDU is an online component that provides you with a couple of risk reduction skills and knowledge about standard drink servings. We elaborate that in our module too, but we really extend beyond that for most of our program. Yes? Are there programs like this at other universities? Well, you should mention that. We were just talking about that before this. We adopted this from the Step Up program at Arizona State University. They founded theirs in 2007. Our variant emerged in 2014, and now they're popping up everywhere. So there's a similar curriculum popping up at many other universities. In your pre-assessment, do you get information on a lot of the students who come from high schools where you've done a lot of prevention intervention work? So do you get some good strategies or some good information in your pre-assessment from those people or things that you can use and that will transfer to college life or post-secondary? Absolutely. I think the pre-assessment really serves as a primer, so maybe highlighting those skills that people may already be using. But I mainly see those aspects, those already pre-known prevention techniques and risk reduction techniques come out during our second module, which in which we ask people strategies to maximize the good and minimize the not-so-goods of alcohol. I've heard some really phenomenally creative methods, such as only going places with $20 in your pocket, to setting limits with your friends and making packs, and there's just a myriad of ways to do that. Right. Yes. Um, do you have metrics in place to measure how successful your program is? So we do. We keep track via the post assessment of okay. data such as this. These are just two of the outcomes. These are two that I thought was most interesting and most applicable, and that I could talk through quite fastly yeah. or quickly. Um, but we keep other metrics too, such as um, club use and stuff of the sorts. Do you track over time? You know, like after. Um after an organization has representatives, I guess, do you have the representative from the student organization? Do they have to then go back to their organization and disseminate the information? So they have to go back to their organization. On their Wisconsin Involvement Network site, they'll be listed as the Badger Step Up Delegate, and they could be turned to by club leadership in times of, in case somebody needs to be reprimanded, or in case they need guidance in how to plan an event that involves safe drinking habits and doesn't violate the student organization alcohol policy. So we don't measure specifically in an experimental setting. We measure correlative data. So it's possible that there could be post hoc, but this is what we see happening after a program. Good question. Thank you. Yes? I'm interested in your um, kind of the phenomenon of this, we think we drink more than we do. Um, so, <laughs> so I wondered just if you had any more thoughts on the mechanism of why people think this, or what is it about college culture that makes us kind of want to is it that we want to say that we drink more than we do? Is it that it's cool to say we drink more? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm making my heart warm. <laughs> so, I could go on for 20 minutes, as I do in our third module, talking about social norms and why we believe this. But there are tons of factors that play into it. Some that we highlight are, psychologically, we overestimate unhealthy visible behaviors. So maybe people sliding down staircases and laundry baskets. Whereas we underestimate healthy, less visible behaviors, like families going to the short stack late at night after a game, or a couple just walking down the street. It stands out to us more when we see people engaging in behavior that is typically more prevalent when they're under the influence of alcohol. So that's one reason. Another reason is social norms on campus that are unspoken rules that guide behavior and not formally taught. So when you're not formally taught, you have nothing to go off of but your perceptions, and shirts like the Drink Was Constantly shirt, while it's a great shirt, it's hilarious, it's very ambiguous as to what Drink Was Constantly means and what the social norms are here.